surprise, I am back. So you being here indicates that you want to become an artist in 2023. Good. You're in the right place then. Because this year oh, I'm planning some absolutely nice stuff for you in order to improve your skills. So you better pop into the club before the door will close. Back to the topic. And for that, we need to ask ourselves something. What do you actually need to become a professional artist? Is it the skills to create a beautiful artwork or the creativity to come up with something you've never seen before? Or maybe it's something as plain as making money. That's the question you gotta answer in order to become your personal kind of professional artist. And just so you know, there is not a single question or answer that is more true as the others. Because every one of us strives to be a different kind of artists, and therefore we all have other goals that we want to achieve. To me, it's quite simple. A professional artist is someone that makes or has made money from his art, as well as well above average skills in drawing and conception of new things. You could say, for me, it's a mix of all the questions from before. But for you, it may be something entirely different. So, before we go deeper into the matter, I'd like you to pause and ask yourself, what is a professional for me? I mean, for you. I mean, you get it. This is the moment where you should pause. There's no valuable content. Okay, I hope you asked and you answered. Because now we're gonna get into the how and why of becoming a professional artist. I will specifically cover the three questions I asked earlier, because that probably helps the greatest part of people trying to improve their skills. But if you got some specific questions that are not these three, just pop them into the Discord or the comments and I'll tell you what I know. The first thing we will tackle is to create beautiful illustrations of any kind. And achieving that is probably the simplest of all things that I will teach you today. The key to that is just practice, practice, and even more practice. Obviously, it matters what you practice, but at the very core of it all, it comes down to what lies behind you. Is it 10 drawings that did not come out well, or is it 10,000 drawings you're completely ashamed of? Because either way, you're gonna need more practice. Even 10,000 failed attempts are not enough. Drawing and painting is something you will never have mastered fully. There is always something more to learn and you will always find others that are either better at what you're doing or can do something that you would like to be able to do. So no matter what level of artistry you're trying to achieve, you should be determined and strong-willed because the road of learning how to draw is a long and hard one and every single person that went down that road should have your deepest respect. Truth be told that just a tiny amount of people will actually pursue drawing long enough to be able to call themselves a professional. You don't need to learn as much as other people do, because in time you will improve, but you have to outlast them. Because the chance of an artist dropping his pen for the last time is huge. Your motivation will drop and you'll have to overcome it, because if you stop, you're most likely not gonna start over again. A good tip that I can give you is that you draw the line, pun intended, when comparing your art. Because if you compare it to other people, especially artists you like on the internet that are famous for their good art, you will come to an end with your artistry. They have practiced more, they have drawn more. There's just no going around that fact. And comparing your drawings one to one to theirs is just not fair. You wouldn't compare a car to a motorbike, or would you? Anyway, if you compare yourself to a great artist all the time, it's very likely you will lose hope and slack off and eventually you'll stop. And we don't do that here. Moving on to being able to create things never seen before. Your creativity is what I mean. And let me stop you before you can say I'm just not a creative person. Because I am not a creative person. And I had to learn the hard way that creativity is something that you can learn. I didn't want to have it true, but it is. So we're kind of in the same boat here. Well, anyway, creativity is something you can learn and you can just get better at it. There are tricks and little things you can do to give your brain a creative boost. But to understand these, we first need to know what our brain is good at. And unfortunately for most of our species, our brain is good at one thing and one thing only. It's doing the least amount of work 
possible. Our brain will only do what is absolutely necessary. That means tasks we already started, have a deadline or have major consequences if we don't do them. Since making your own deadlines is relatively hard because somewhere your brain knows they're not real and having to shoot your dog if you don't come up with a creative solution in the next few days doesn't seem too healthy either, the only option for us is to trick our brain into thinking that we already started the task and we can achieve that by writing our task down on a piece of paper. For example, if I would like to create a character of some sort, I can achieve having my brain work on a solution for my character task by writing down what I'd like the character to be and some sort of restrictions. These are pretty pretty powerful, because our brain is pretty good at solving problems and going around restrictions. It can be something as simple as the guy needs to have a big head and it should serve a purpose. By writing that down, you tricked your brain into thinking that you started the task of making a character and your brain is automatically more active at trying to figure out how to make your character work. This method is relatively good if you have a busy life and not much time to just relax and do nothing. But if you're on the more relaxed side of living, another good way of coming up with creative solutions is to just bore your brain into being creative. Write your task down, give yourself some restrictions and then do nothing. No phone, no TV, not even a book. Just you, yourself and your brain. It is quite essential that you are bored like you never were before, because your brain will be forced to work in order to keep you entertained. And since there won't be anything your brain can do, except figure out how you want to tackle your creative effort, it'll resort to thinking about that. I cannot tell you which one works best, I usually write my stuff down and then let it be in the back of my head for a week, but it might work for me and not for you. The only way to know is try. Now, the third element that makes an artist a professional. Money! Making millions and billions and bajillions of dollars from your art, but only when you're dead. The true and dreadful motive behind every artist, obviously dying. I'm just kidding. Making money from your art, while still alive obviously, is kind of a hassle. Because do you consider getting money for a drawn piece by a friend or family member, for example, being a professional? Or is it only when you get a total stranger to give you something for it? If it's the first one, it's a no-brainer. If someone you know wants you to draw something and they're willing to pay you, nice, just don't scan them. If it's the latter, it's gonna be a little bit harder. First of all, you will need to have at least some kind of artistic skill. Because let's be honest, nobody pays you for something they can do themselves. But there are ways to make a fast bang for a buck. And the fastest way to make a little bang for a buck is to boost your social skills at the same time. It's to go to a convention, not as a visitor, but as an exhibitor. There are endless amounts of various conventions that take place all over the world, and some of them rent spots for a small fee for artists and other exhibitors that they can show the world what they have. If that's nothing for you, you can always make money from online prints of your art. However, that usually doesn't work if you're at the beginning of your art career, and it also takes a huge amount of time if you don't have an established fan base. The surefire fastest way for you to make some money for what you drew is to just put yourself out in the field. There are so so many people at a convention and if your art is just halfway decent and as long as you don't charge half of the world for one of your drawings, there's bound to be people that like it enough to buy it. And as a bonus, you can make yourself known. Even people that don't come and talk to you, they can see you and maybe they become a fan after they've checked you out on the internet. Now I've held a heck of a monologue and I will shut my ass up very soon because it's time for you to do something. No matter what kind of professional artist you want to be this year, it's gonna be a long and bumpy road with definitely less ups than downs. But that's what we need to go through in order to achieve what we want. And with these inspiring words, I wish all of you the best of luck for the coming year and happy drawing.